Hello guys, welcome to Reptrixy Classes, your learning expert. Myself Ramo and here I am with a wonderful quant question of the day. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get notification of every new upload on the channel. So what do you have to do first? First, note the question down and try to solve on your own. Then comment your answers, then only watch the complete discussion. The situation is a very simple situation, but this is the base of many complex situations. So if you just learn the correct reaction here, I'm going to give you some homework. If you work on that, actually you will have complete clarity at how to do deal with similar situations given in some complex manner. So let's read the question. This says A and B walk from X to Y a distance of 27 km at 5 km per hour and 7 km per hour respectively. Now it says B reaches Y and immediately turns back meeting A at Z. What is the distance from X to Z? So the situation is very simple. Let me explain you with the help of diagram then it will be more clear to you. The situation is this is A, this is B, this is point X, this is point Y. Look, the speed is given to be 5 and 7 km per hour. B is definitely faster. So what will happen? B will start leading. It will reach Y then it will turn back while A is somewhere here. It is going to meet it. The meeting point is being told to us is Z. So they are going to meet at Z. What we need to find is the distance between X and Z. First, I will tell you the traditional process that you follow. That is purely based on memorization, no understanding I tell you. And that you think that it is understanding. That limits your thinking. Then I will tell you what is the better thought process and better reaction so that you, you can actually train yourself to think in that fashion. And then it will be possible to further go and analyze, change the situation and learn new things. So here what usually you do, people do. First you do that, you know, just A and B started at the same time and then when they are meeting, so from the start till this meeting point, time taken by both will be equal, right? So what you do actually, you just equate the time and how do you do that? You say that if I assume this distance to be A and total distance is given to be 27, so this distance will be 27 minus A, alright? Then how do you equate time? You will say that at point Z, A has travelled A distance. So the time taken will be distance upon speed, that's what you do, so A upon 5 you will write here. While for B, you can clearly see B has gone from here to here, complete distance that is 27 plus turn back and this distance. So 27 minus A as well. So in total the distance covered by B will be 54 minus A divided by the speed which is equal to 7. Now you will do some cross multiplication, it will give you 7A is equal to 5 times 54 minus 5A. So it will be ultimately 12a giving you 5 times 54 divided by 12, not divided by 12 now. In the next step you have to divide by 12, so 5 times 54 divided by 12, that will give you 22.5. And therefore you mark the answer and you become happy that you have solved one question. Look, although you have solved one question using memorization, you have missed the opportunity to learn in a great way. Right and to analyze further. Now I will first explain you that why there is a problem in this wrong pro in this thought process. This thought process is purely dependent on that you are actually using the fundamentals correctly, but you are solving in a very incorrect way. Your reactions to this situation is very poor, and therefore your problem solving skill will suffer in a complex questions. So first thing you have to do is you have to get out of this kind of methods. Right, And you have to use the fundamentals in a very correct way. So first you think, then you raise your pen. Immediately you raise the pen while reading the question, that is the main problem. You just think what is given and what they are asking. The first thing you should understand here, the ratio of the speed is 5 ratio 7. So if I say that A and B speed ratio is given to be 5 ratio 7, and one, one fundamental you actually use, that the time taken will be same. B from total distance to here and A from here to here. Both will take the same time. Now please tell me, use your logic. What your logic says that if two persons are having different speeds but they are actually walking or traveling for the same time, who will walk more? 
Who will walk more? You know that. The one with faster speed. Or in a way we say that in case where time will be constant, speed and distance are proportional. So if this is the speed ratio, this will be distance ratio also. Both will be same since time is constant. Now ask yourself one question. If I have the idea of distance ratio, that is 5 ratio 7. How can I calculate individual distances? Because look, distance between x to z is nothing but the distance covered by a. The distance covered by a. So if I have this knowledge of the ratio of the speeds, how can I get the distance covered traveled by a? We can get it if we have the ratio and we somehow find the total distance traveled by both a and b together. If we can get the total speed covered by A and B together, it won't be difficult for us to find distance traveled by A or B. We can calculate both. There is not going to be any problem. So then you have to think in that direction. So your thought process then should be that how can I get the total distance? Just see. B has covered this much distance, right? And A has covered this much distance. If you sum total it, it is going to be double of this distance. Very simple, right? Look here. B has gone from here to here, then it came back at this point. So this is the distance covered by B in this process. While A is covering this distance, total will be what? 27 times 2. You can visualize mentally. You need not to draw this diagram for that. So total distance you got to know is going to be 54. Now tell me, sir. Now, is this question difficult for you? Now look, look the reality of this question. The reality of this question is that if two numbers are in 5 ratio 7 or two values are in 5 ratio 7 and total is 54 then what is this value because this a is distance traveled by a in that time so you have to find the value corresponding to this now look what you have been doing here you were in a zone of time speed distance only while you can easily and mentally think this you need not to raise your pen to get this 27 times 2 is 54 by visualizing that they, when they are meeting total distance will be 54 and the speed ratio or distance ratio will be 5 ratio 7. Now if this total 12 parts is equal to 54 you have to find what 5 correspond to because that is the distance between x and z. So you can clearly find that 5 will correspond to 54 times 5 divided by 12 and in no time you can write it to be 22.5 kilometers. Alright. Do you know what? If you think in this way, first question will come to your mind. Oh, when they met for the first time, total distance was double of the distance. Right? So why not to think about the next meeting? That when they are going to meet the next time, let's say at the point Q. So what will be the distance between point Q and point X when they are meeting for the second time? So if you have this kind of thought process, you can actually go further to think little more when third meeting will happen when fourth meeting will happen is there any pattern well if you do this actually you are actually doing the memorization technique you will be able to solve only this question nothing else so this is your homework understand the situation and just go further find when they are meeting for the sixth second time actually what is the distance between x and that meeting point then try to find for the third meeting and then try to notice is there any pattern because if you can identify something here it will be very easy for you to solve many complex situations right so do write your analysis in the comments i will be explaining this the next meetings as well in upcoming videos right so thank you everyone for watching the video lesson hope you all enjoyed it do not forget to share it with more and more students and tell them about this quant question of the day series which is helping to shape your thought process. Thank you everyone. Goodbye. Have a great Sunday.